Welcome to Fail Lab Lectures. Today we are discussing about work, energy, and energy crisis. That means I'll be covering work, all type of energies, I mean all forms of energies, conservation of energy, and the energy crisis. So, to start off with, what's what is energy? Well, energy is capacity to do work. Well, that's what. Um, a primary school student would say but since we are studying at the higher level we will discuss energy in a in a in a like a pro way okay so energy is a scalar quantity associated with the state of one or more objects okay so it's something that is associated with the state of the object if the state of the object is you know, is say um, less um, well, say it is in at rest, then the energy is sm low, and uh, if it is in 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 motion, the energy is relatively high. So that's what we know from the ex experiments as of yet. So the first uh, type of energies that I'd like to introduce you to is uh, kinetic energy. So kinetic energy is the energy that is associated with uh, motion. So this energy is something that the body is in motion. Say here a pendulum here. A pendulum bob actually. Okay. Say a car moving down the street. If a car is moving it does have energy and that particular energy is called as kinetic energy and you can calculate kinetic energy by half mv squared so the mass of the car times the square of the speed with which it's traveling will give you the kinetic energy second type of energy that i like to discuss is the gra uh, i mean the potential energy So potential energy is is nothing but the rest energy. So potential energy is associated with the, the rest of the body and it is given by half m x squared. So it's here the di x is the displacement actually uh, or the height of uh, uh, we'll take that in particular later. So potential energy is nothing but, you know, when you're dealing with something at rest, you get potential energy. So what kind of potential energy can we, I mean, like, uh, if, a, if a body is at rest, it, its energy is stored. So it, the stored energy is nothing but the potential energy. And uh, we'll discuss more in detail about what are the types of potential energies and right now we we'll move to something very important a, a very important definition as well as a, a derivation that we are going to do for the first time on the lectures uh, the, the definition that I'm going to tell you is about the work so work is nothing but energy transferred by the means of force so if you transfer energy to a body then the work is positive. If the body transfers energy to you, then the work done by the body is negative. So that's the that's the science of the of the uh, you know the work is concerned with. So we'll just go away straight to something called as the kinetic energy, K E and uh, work theorem. Of course it's uh, it plays an important part in the history of physics, hence I'm doing this. It's very important. So what you do is first, say this is a wire, and this is x axis direction in the wire. So there is a bead on it, on which a force is acting at an angle. So this is the force. It's a, it's a, it's a force that doesn't change with time. So that means the force is a constant force, and it's acting at an angle phi. 
All right. So it's a bead or a ball that is rolling on X, uh, a wire or, or anything you want to imagine. So, so this is the force that is acting on the on the ball or a bead at an at an angle phi. So then, since the direction we're taking here is X, so we'll also take that F also as X. So F X here is M times x right acceleration in the x direction this is the first equation so initially let's consider some, dis some displacement here from this point x1 till x2 so the body goes from x1 till x2 and the forces everything are same the angle is same angle is constant the force is constant but the velocity of the body changes because the body is accelerating. So, the first, uh, uh, so the equation that you can write, if you can recall from one uh, two dimensional motion lecture, v square minus v square is equal to 2ax. Right? 2ax x. So, this is a very important, this is the final velocity, this is the initial velocity. As I said, v is the final velocity of u here is the initial velocity and uh, d here is the displacement uh, and the positions are x1 and x2 ok so d is nothing but x2 minus x1 ok so next what you do is you substitute for a and uh, a is nothing but uh, v square by 2x minus u square by 2x you put this value of a in 1 so fx is nothing but mv squared we'll take x common from the denominator and, and multiply it here so um, right so here since the displacement is not x it is d so it is these are all d here ok it is d again d f x is m v squared by 2 minus m u squared by 2 so if you remember for kinetic energy we wrote m v squared by 2 so here this is the final uh, velocity hence it is the kin final, final kinetic energy and this is the ki initial kinetic energy so as we define the force as uh, Define force as the change in energy or the transfer of energy from one body to another body by with a force. Here, of course, there is no transfer of energy in one sense, but the energy has changed. There is transfer of energy, but again, it's too complex for me to describe how I'm right now. But the change in energy is taking place. The change in kinetic energy, hence this can be written as force, I mean work done is nothing but the product of force uh, and displacement. This is a very important equation. So in this derivation, however, the so in this derivation, however, uh, df is equal to w, which we have got. The work is also a scalar. So here, what we'll do is in this derivation, uh, fx d cos phi is equal to what you get for work. So it is f d cos phi is is what is for work. So so this is the work and uh, the kinetic energy theorem in order for you to apply this uh, this formula when solving problems one has to remember that the force has to be constant and the particle that you are considering here that are considered as a ball or, or whatever you want a bearing or something so the it has to be a rigid body or it has to be something uh, like uh, a 
something that is having less mass, you cannot consider a bus uh, or, or an airplane or something. It has to be something like a point mass, all right? That's uh, kinetic energy work and kinetic energy theorem for you. So, um, again, we'll discuss about this in, in further detail, but the signs. So, from the equation, you can get just guess that I've written there uh, about the directions. It does the direction of the work depends mainly on angle phi. So, but you don't have to do all that. But may, um, well, you can find out the direction of work by finding out the direction of displacement. So, W, you know, is nothing but it's not an equal sign, but while finding uh, the sign of uh, work done, you can take the sign of the displacement and uh, you can, you know, put the sign, all right? It's pretty easy in one sense. So, um, now we shall uh, apply this formula to something called as gravitational potential energy. So, gravitational potential energy is a potential energy that is stored when the body is, uh, you know, at, is at rest at certain height. So, what happens when you throw the ball, it goes up and again falls back towards the ground. Initially, you are giving some kinetic energy to this and hence it goes up. After going up, it reaches certain height where the kinetic energy is zero, but the potential energy is maximum and then the while falling down, the again the potential energy is converted back into the kinetic energy. So, this is what happens. So, at that particular height, at certain distance, the whatever the potential energy it had is called as the gravitational potential energy. The potential energy that is being converted on its way towards the ground is nothing but the gravitational potential energy because it is a potential energy that is present due to the presence of gravitational force. Okay? So, um, gravitational potential energy. So, gravitational potential energy is given by E is equal to mgh. It directly depends on the height of uh, the particle or the object that you have. Uh, or you can literally write it as the displacement also mgh or mgd in one sense. Uh, it is the same. So, um, a change, maybe here, you can write it as also the change in gravitational energy is mgh and uh, if you are finding out one more formula for uh, gravitational energy is nothing but F again, the force of gravity that is towards the ground and uh, the displacement again, the height or the displacement, you get the same thing, again fgb cos phi when it is falling at an angle or you are throwing it, I mean most of the time this phi is 90 degree and you get zero, uh, but uh, you know phi is 90 degree and you get zero, but uh, if it is at zero degree, uh, you, you do the math. So, so how much work do, do you do? Say so there is a body here, a ball, it is uh, kept on the floor, I want to put the ball on the table. So, how much work should I be doing? So, the ball is here initially, xi, this is the final position of the ball. So, how much work should I do to put the ball from here to there? So, th there are two things that are happening here. At this point of time, the only force is Fg. Okay. And for me to put this from here, I, I need to counter this force and accelerate 
the body from the ground to the table. So the force, I am putting some force and I am doing some work and the, the work is negative because the body is trans, uh, you know, giving out energy. So that work is given by minus of uh, mg and uh, whatever the displacement of the height of the table is, let us take as displacement d itself and cos phi, you put it at an angle. Okay, or now mg d is all that you need, so minus mg d again. Because you are doing work against the gravitational force, hence uh, in the upward direction, and hence this is uh, you know, minus. So from this equation, you know, if phi is 180 degrees, you get work is maximum, and so on for this. It's the same for this, and also the gravitational potential energy. So if it is zero degrees, zero. If it is 90 degrees again, it is also again my maximum. It is, if it is 180 degrees again, it's maximum, and so on. So what is the work done by a spring force? Now. But before we go into that, what is a spring? So here, this is the spring, S, uh, and this is a mass, a block that I've simply attached. You know, in this state, this is the relaxed state of the spring. If I just pull it up and release, the spring will go into a state of chaos. But the spring tries to get back its initial, uh, whatever the position it is in at this point of time, even after releasing. Hence, it, it restores the initial position of the body, of the spring itself. So that is sometimes spring force is called as restoring force because it tries to restore even after you create some some chaos uh, and even though the spring wobbles and there's all that uh, jiggling motion and yet it comes back to its initial state or the rest or it gets restored in one sense. So according to Hooke's law. Spring force is given by um, a spring constant times k times uh, the displacement. So, in this uh, spring constant, again, you need to do it ex calculate experimentally, and it, it varies with spring. So, it is expressed in terms of uh, four, I'm uh, sorry, newton per meter, and uh, again, spring force is expressed in newtons. Again, this is the displacement you get. So it is the spring force is expressed in Newton per meter. So this is the Hooke's law, uh, named after Robert Hooke or his contribution of uh, English physicist who, who gave this wonderful formula to calculate how the spring works. So work done by the spring is pretty simple. It is nothing but half k x squared. So here x, say here this is the x is equal to 0 and uh, x is equal to 1 and uh, here x is equal to or xf is this or xi, this is the initial point I release it and this is the, it's just like the pendulum bob that swings to and forth and that's what happens in this, in this spring while it restores its original position. So here it goes to, this is the maximum, this is the minimum. And, and this wobbles down. So the work done by the spring is positive if the final position is somewhere close to x naught. 
if it is at x naught, then the work done is also zero because the x is zero. And again, if it is too far away from this x naught, then it is negative. If it is too close or almost, I mean, like it's not almost at x is equal to zero, it is at very near in the vicinity of x is equal to zero, then it is the work done is positive. So, so. Uh, what is this? If it is an ideal spring which obeys Hooke's law, then you know this work done should should be zero because um, you know it it restores itself to its original position. So you know work done in a circular motion or in a path that is circular, the where in the initial and the final positions are the same is zero because the displacement is zero. So the same thing here. So the work then is zero if it re if, if the spring gets restored to its original position. All right. Now we go to something that is uh, quite a bit complex and requires integration. So first what you do is you consider a graph x, again the same force that I'm taking, the B thing, you have to remember that, that we used for the work energy theorem. And this is the you know the point is x1 and this is uh, x2. So, this is the one dimensional analysis of a general variable force. So, you know, when we calculated the, the work kinetic energy theorem, we calculated work done, it was actually for a constant force if you remember. Here, we are calculating it for a variable force. See, the force varies. So, um, with respect to x, hence, then the work done is the integral of fx dx xi xf. This is what you get for one dimensions. This is one dimension, not two dimensions, so this is one. B. For three dimensions, And generally, uh, the the work done can be written as uh, an integral of R i, R f w, P w, or you can write it as uh, so just w d w just d w so x i, x f, f of x d x plus uh, y i y f f of y b y plus uh, z i z f f of z b z. So this gives you uh, a three dimensional uh, general variable force equations to solve this or here you can use the one dimensional formula and uh, if you know integration, okay, you can quite easily do the mathematics. So this was about uh, the um, well, the uh, conversion of work and energy. But again, yes, one more thing that I've forgotten is uh, you can also write work done is equal to delta k. The change in kinetic energy can also be associated with the work done. So work done is nothing but delta k. Or you can also write this as half. M O E F squared minus half M O E I squared. Okay, the force is invariable. 
so uh, sorry, if the force is variable, uh, you can do this. And if it is invariable, you get W is equal to F times D. So, so it's pretty much the same. And um, this concludes our relationship between the work and the energy. I've tried to give you some formulas to calculate the work done by the spring and the gravitational potential energy. And while you try and lift something, to put put it on top of the table or wherever you would like to. So um, the physics of every day basically has been explained. To you. But again, um, while we continue our journey uh, with these lectures, the mathematics gets complex and complex and complex. So, uh, well, anyway, hopefully we can uh, find ways, you know, to to still learn things uh, as such as this. One has not nothing to worry. So, well, now again, we introduce something called as power. What is power? P power is capacity to do work. That's what you always. Uh, you know, remember, but power is defined by this dW by dt. So that means that the rate of change of work is nothing but power. So this is the instantaneous power again, just like uh, what we did in one dimensions and measurements. Uh, whenever there is a derivative, it's always instantaneous. And uh, if you want to find out for uh, average power, it's nothing but the total power by total time taken. So it's the you know, average power. Now, in this equation, if I substitute what we got for uh, the kinetic energy and the work here from the that from that theorem, you know, again you get F cos phi into dx by dt. That's what you get. So W is equal to F cos phi, F cos phi into dx. X here is the displacement. There I have taken d, so don't get confused. So that is nothing but F v cos theta. Again, this is also a vector. So F v cos theta. Again and again, even in this formula, when we derived F in W is equal to F d. When you multiply two vectors, you always get a scalar. If you multiply a scalar with a vector, you always get a vector. Okay? So work is a scalar quantity. So is the energy and and uh, and so is the power. Okay? So cos phi. Okay? Alright. So I think we're done with uh, the work and energy. Uh, now we shall go to the conservation of energy. And, uh, and let's see what are the forms of energy. I think it will take uh, a million years in order to you know, recognize all the forms of energy and uh, discuss about all the forms of energy. But uh, we're going to make a uh, maximum attempt in, in finding what we already know. So, um, well, we know so much about energy today. I don't think without your own car or um, let's say light, the laptop or um, well, uh, electricity, we wouldn't exist the way we exist in, in this modern society. So I was not able to do the lectures, I was not able to put it on YouTube. You would, you would not be able to watch it and there are so many disadvantages. I don't know what life would be without technology. Of course, we, there is a slogan. We are all slaves of technology. We are slaves are all of our own creation. So, but the point is, while you do mathematics, at least don't use calculators. At least use your brain, at least during the calculations of, of mathematics. At least to larger extent. Of course, it may not be 100%, but to a larger extent, try and use it. Uh, but anyway, other than that, cars, mechanical energy, uh, this the fuel in the petrol and the diesel and, and water, steam turbines, steam engines, uh, petrol engines and the, and the diesel engines that we use uh, all convert into uh, that store 
energy into, you know, after burning, we get mechanical energy, motion. So, mechanical energy is one of those important types of energy. It's, it's one of those types of energy that is very vital to us. From today, from Bangalore to Boston, I can reach in 24 hours approximately. And, uh, well, how do I reach? And it is because of the turbines. And how, do, how does turbine work? It is because of a basic principle uh, you know, of, of mechanics that it works. And yes, conservation of uh, energy is also applicable to the turbines and so on. But the, the main challenge that we face as a, as a human society today is that the energies that we know are exhausting it's decreasing the uh, the volume that we the fuels that we have is decreasing petrol is going down uh, diesel is going down uh, so what happens when a day comes where we don't have enough fuel to power our uh, locomotives or do we have to get back again to the steam era well that, those are the questions that is just a question mark until we get to that situation however as of today, there is a lot of demand for energy. Many people are born every single day. So the population of the world is increasing heavily. And per person, there, you know, the energy per person is increasing rapidly. So to meet the, uh, you know, end, to make the ends meet, it's very difficult in today. And hence, it has given rise to something called as energy crisis. So we'll talk about that later, but of course we'll have to discuss first about how and why do we want energy and what are what is energy and how do we stop the energy crisis. So to begin with, what if something happens tomorrow that we'll have to abandon Earth or we are all, I mean most of our civilization is uh, gone, simply gone because of a, a catastrophe that struck millions of years ago, then what would you tell the other people, other person, uh, that a equation or a way for them to have a better civilization, to transfer or you know, to you know, send information to the future world. I mean like you have to pass on what you have uh, discovered from in present situation to the future if something as such as a catastrophe takes place. So what would you tell them? Well, we have not. We don't have any idea about what we have to tell when these kind of situation takes place. So, but however, it is because we, firstly, we don't know what energy is properly. Those energy does not exist like what they say, the quanta, like photon. We don't know. We It doesn't exist. We have not seen that way. Of course, the quanta exists only because the photon, the quant, you know, it, uh, it depends on the frequency. The photon's frequency is as such that it makes it, uh, you know, possible for it to exist in tiny packets of energy because of its frequency. But it's not the same for all types of energy, right? Okay. So, what we will do today is define quantum mechanics. Sorry. Uh, define conservation of energy according to the quantum mechanics. So energy does not change in the manifold is a simple statement that says uh, that energy can neither be destroyed nor be created. Energy does not change in the manifold or the event that, uh, that takes place in the nature. So it's all the same, you know, after, say for example, normally whenever I go to McDonald's, I eat two uh, burgers, okay. Say my girlfriend came and uh, well she bought two, one for me and one for her. So I I have three now. I have three burgers. And accidentally I meet up with an old friend of mine, and he says, uh, I mean, well, we had to share with him, and he takes away three, okay, three and everybody eat the burgers. So what happens now? 
the energy that I got from the burgers that I ate is in my stomach. Of course, you can calculate it. And my girlfriend's stomach, you can calculate it. And again, my friend's stomach, you can again calculate it. If you add up all the energies that we've got by eating burger, the sum is equal to the total calories of the, all the burgers that we took. Alright? So, anyway. That means that the energy is converted from one form to another form. In even in this world, say when we took an example of the spring force during the spring force, uh, when you compress the spring, actually what happens? All the atoms in the spring, the jiggling motion, still the body is still uh, moving all the time. Atoms are moving; they are not at a single place thanks to the uncertainty principle. So, <laughs> anyway, so the body is always, the atoms are always moving, it's always jiggling in perpetual motion. So, what exactly happens is that when you compress, you're either slowing down the perpetual motion or you're either increasing the perpetual motion. If you increase the perpetual motion, what actually happens is that spring heats up, right? If you increase the kinetic energy, heat energy is nothing but a, but the inner kinetic energy is nothing but heat, right? So that's heat energy, but we don't know much depth to calculate the heat energy. Of course, we cannot calculate in one sense of, uh, of all the ch energy changes that takes place around us, and uh, but yet energy of conservation, conservation of energy in one sense is true as of yet. So what next? For us, well, again, you take uh, the gravitational potential energy example here. Gravitational potential energy is also conserved. The energy is always conserved. So here, it is, uh, you know, kept at a table. So it is kept on a table. So the height h. So if somebody pushes it so that it falls from here till here, so the energy that it takes. I'm not interested in this energy. Okay. I mean, I can find, but anyway, not required. So energy here is nothing but mgh, mass times the gravity, uh, acceleration to the gravity times the height of the table. So that's what you get. So, or you know, in one sense, we can write it as weight, weight of the ball, weight of the ball times the height of the table. So w times h is the simplest of the, of the you know, uh, equations are in the examples that you can get for gravitational potential energy. Now, uh, if you're trying to find out something about the kinetic energy, again, as I said before, um, the best example that we can take is that of a pendulum. Pendulum bomb. So here, again, I'm so sorry that it is not correct to the scale. Alright, so this theta is same, okay, this theta is same. So here, at this point of time, what exactly happens is that the kinetic energy is zero. Here, the kinetic energy is maximum. Again, K is zero here. And once you swing the bob, it keeps on uh, oscillating along an axis. And the kinetic energy always at this point of time is maximum because the velocity is maximum. And then what do you do? What do you get if you find out the kinetic energy? So W by 2G is what you get. W V squared by two V squared. Okay. Anyway, so kinetic energy, if you find out, will give you an answer of weight of the bob times V squared by two G. So it's a very simple equation. You know, it depends on what situation you are at. So generally so the kinetic energy is maximum when the velocity is maximum, right? Of course, it also depends on the mass of the body, 
But since the mass doesn't vary with time, the mass is al always constant, uh, at least for now, we'll, when we go to quantum mechanics, things change. However, right now, since, I mean, the kinetic energy is maximum when the velocity is also maximum. Now, we'll study about some uh, different types of uh, energy. So, the first is the heat energy, as I said, it's nothing but the internal kinetic energy. Next is the el electric energy. So, there is uh, a charge of what, 5 coulombs here and uh, there are you know, plus and minuses. You move that, the energy of the work done in moving this plus and minuses is nothing but the electrical energy. Then you get the radiant energy. That is nothing but something to do with the light, the characteristics of light, a, a photoelectric effect. You know, the energy liberated during the photoelectric effect is nothing but the radiant energy. And uh, you get so, uh, chemical energy, you know, forming, I mean, forming bonds, breaking of bonds, forming of bonds. All those actions that takes place in a chemical reaction is nothing but chemical energy. So the work done while doing that is uh, chemical energy. So thermal energy, again, heating up things, cooling down things, thermodynamics, entire of thermodynamics, nothing but thermal energy is what you use. You know, work done to heat something is nothing but the thermal energy. So there is one more energy called as the elastic energy, which is almost very similar to that of uh, the uh, chemical energy, it has to do with something, the bonds and the atoms and stuff. Uh, elastic energy is nothing but the attraction of force, attractive forces that take, uh, that happens in the, and the work done in stretching something, you know, elastic means stretching rubber, stretching rubber, uh, the, uh, you know, the work done um, and how much energy do you put to do the particular work is nothing but the elastic energy. And then comes the nuclear energy. So nuclear energy takes place um, with the particles that are present in the nucleus. So I mean there are only two particles again, the neutron and the proton, they are called as also baryons. So again, they are also called, uh, based on that beautiful character of, uh, of, you know, the strangeness. So these are also called as strange particles. Okay? Strangeness is one of those beautiful characteristics that we used to uh, uh, cat, you know, well, make the charge of all the particles that we know. So it's a very good uh, characteristic that we found out. Gelmon found out. Gelmon from USA found out and one more Ni Nishihima or someone from Japan, uh, you know, independently uh, discovered that they could use strangeness in order to, uh, you know, prepare a chart of all the particles that was discovered in that day. And again, we'll have to mention someone that I admire and my role model: uh, mass energy, Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein's equation, famous equation was of E is equal to mc squared, said that mass is a property, as I said before, that exists with the existence of the particle itself, so that it comes with the existence. The mass energy is another type of energy that one can, uh, you know, take into the account. So E is equal to mc squared. Again, okay, for a photon, you can also write, you know, for, for calculating the radiant energy you have E is equal to H nu Planck's formula H is the Planck's constant again here C is the speed of light all right so so we don't know whether all forms of energy blobs but of course we know that photon blobs right so next Conservation of mechanical energy. So conservation of mechanical energy, we all know that uh, you know, for anything to move, you need some parts that move. Joking. Anyway, uh, me mechanical energy is nothing but the motion. When body is in motion, it's so rotational. If it is in rotation, then you call it a mechanical. So the cars, 
automobiles as a whole is mechanical and the energy that uh, the engine converts all the fuels to is the mechanical energy and mechanical energy is given by the formula uh, delta I mean well, okay total kinetic energy plus uh, total potential energy so sum of both is uh, is equal to the mechanical energy and said that both I mean the energy can either convert from kinetic energy to potential energy or potential energy to kinetic energy the energy cannot convert into any other form so this is a very important point one has to remember so this is the mechanical energy and um, okay. mechanical energy initially how much our initial mechanical energy is is, not, is equal to E mac final that means delta k plus delta u is equal to E mac is equal to zero so again that means that the mechanical energy is conserved having said that if you use only conservative forces otherwise uh, 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 there is again we don't know what happens so it's uh, a big question mark again okay? as I mentioned before uh, conservative forces are path independent okay so they are not dependent on the path so for example if I say there is this point A and point B and uh, I use about uh, 6 germs of energy to move from point A to point B and if I take the longer route from point A to point B the energy is all again the same 6 joules so it's path independent the energy is path independent okay So there are two types of forces that I should have mentioned as I said conservative forces and non-conservative forces. So conservative forces are for example um, now gravitational potential energy and uh, spring uh, force is a, is a conservative force and non-conservative forces are friction, drag that we discussed in the previous. So we have actually discussed more about non-conservative forces than the conservative forces so, yes and thermal energy is also non-conservative force so in quantum mechanics conservation laws seem to be satisfying that it is uh, independent of uh, absolute time so it's a very important condition when it comes to quantum mechanics in the quantum world so many things happen and so many things are unknown but you know the experiment suggests that the energy the conservation of energy is independent of time so it's a very important experiment that they that they did and they found out and they also found out the momentum is independent of space and the conservation of momentum is independent again we'll discuss the conservation of momentum and momentum in the next lecture but conservation of momentum uh, is also again okay, independent of space momentum is nothing but P is equal to mass times velocity where P and V are uh, now uh, vectors and if you if I take the derivative of this equation with respect to time then I get uh, Newton loss this is my favorite way of deriving Newton's laws instead of writing all those rubbish that you consider the velocity v1, v2 and whatever you do uh, this is a very simple way you know you get the final answer in one step so uh, this is a pretty easy method for one to write I still remember when I was in, in the college and I was asked to do the uh, you know derive Newton's second law and I actually did it this way 
and uh, the teacher was so irritated that I didn't get a single marks for my derivation. So that's that's what happens with our Indian education system. Anyway, um, so now you can conduct an experiment and calculate all the energies that you use and you know all the uh, uh, math that you do, and then again redo the experiment in different location. And uh, what you'll find is that again momentum is independent of space. So, conservation of uh, conservation of conservational laws are independent of space and time, right? So that means that they are independent of angular orientation in space, right? in space in the sense I'm going to relatively anyway so they are independent of angular orientation the conservation of laws are independent of angular orientation that means they are independent of both uh, well space as well as time the three dimensions that we live in as well as the time dimension that is nothing but the space so hence because of this important characteristic we can deduce that the angular momentum is also conserved, right? So the angular momentum is also conserved because of this principle. Hence, the invariance of the world to angular orientation, invariance of the world to the angular orientation is called as angular momentum. Okay, and the angular momentum is also conserved, as I said, because of that wonderful principle that I discovered. So besides that, the charges are conserved, you know, the pluses and the minus, again I said, you add, you subtract, at the end of the day, whatever you put in, you get whatever you... Uh, I mean, whatever you're putting is the same thing that is already there, but it might have shattered into many pieces or whatever. But the charges are the same, so the, con the charges are conserved. And this principle is the basics of quantum mechanics. Okay, I mean, one of the basics of quantum mechanics, one of the basic pillars of quantum mechanics. Conservation of baryons, number of protons and neutrons in the starting of uh, the reaction is same as at the end of the reaction. And uh, conservation of leptons, again, the electrons, muons, mesons, uh, and uh, neutrons, sorry, neutrinos are all the same in the, I mean, they're all conserved, okay? Hence, the loss that govern how much energy is available is actually the loss of thermodynamics and a principle called as entropy, okay? It measures how much energy is available and uh, you know, entropy again, it depends on the system that you consider and, and it, uh, it measures the chaos in the system. I mean, again, we'll, uh, you know, get through this again when we um, introduce thermodynamics, okay? So, although energy is conserved, nature doesn't bother. That's what we've discovered. And, uh, say, if there is 150 gallons of water flowing per second in a water turbine, the energy produced by that water turbine is enough to actually power entire of United States. So, but again, building the water turbine that will withstand that enormous force is a is an engineering challenge and uh, you know, finding out more ways and alternating fuels is a big challenge to our I mean, us physicists, and therefore it's up to the physicists and their ways to liberal, uh, liberate us, li liberate the world from the present energy crisis. And uh, well, it's not something. It's not. A, I mean, yes, it's a crisis, just like a financial crisis. It stays and it goes, and it comes back, and again it stays, and it's all. I mean, you kick it out and you kick it back, and so on. It's, it's like a football match, you know. Um, but again, of course. Uh, we have to take some steps and step up our um, <coughs> uh, 
uh, sorry, uh, you have to step up our uh, methods to find alternative fuel sources and uh, hopefully make this world a better place to live, a more uh, le less toxic uh, and uh, a less polluted uh, world hopefully in the days to come and uh, we can lead a very good life. So energy is always around you no matter whether you can see it or not energy is always around you and uh, well even now when I'm talking my energy is being converted into sound and again the sound is energy that I'm actually converting uh, you know into various other forms uh, that will be used in days to come so anyway so the energy is always being converted from one form to another you can never destroy energy not create energy all right it's the same for the information information again when it comes to the black holes and Hawking theories I'll explain it in detail uh, the conservation of information that means the information can never be lost so even though if, if, if I decide to delete some part of information that is uh, and some data even though it is not in it cannot be retraced by any computer or hardware or software on this earth it will be roaming somewhere in space uh, hence the information will never be destroyed anyway it's goodbye goodbye from me and uh, thanks for watching